This is the Tier 3 Resources video. This training and re-registration is coordinated by Student Involvement, which is an office of University Life, the Student Affairs Division at George Mason University for the 2017-2018 academic year. And Student Involvement, located in the Hub 2300, serves as an incredible resource to you. Student Involvement houses the Patriot Activities Council, films and off-campus programming for collaborations and campus-wide planning, student government who can support with advocacy, the well-being team for workshops and collaboration, TEDx George Mason U, and the most important registered student organization and fraternity sorority life staff. If you have any questions, remember you can always reach out to the following people for support. The RSO Lead Team, RSO at gmu.edu, or Student Funding Board, SFB at gmu.edu, and other administrative staff. If all the requirements are completed for re-registration, there are a variety of resources that a Tier 3 registered student organization has access to. This video is designed to expose you to the resources that are available. These resources include Spaces on campus, event services and technology, advertising, print services, how to utilize Get Connected in the best way, and student involvement resources. Remember that as a registered student organization, along with completing all of the re-registration requirements, you are accountable for all of the resources that you use on campus. Throughout this video, you as the organization leader will be held accountable to this information. It is important to take note of the information. In the event planning video for Tier 3, you will be shown how to utilize resources to plan an event. As a Tier 3, you have access to basic meeting rooms like the JC A through G and Hub rooms, tabling and basic outdoor spaces, JC Cinema, Hub Corner Pocket, plazas, technology classrooms, JC Dewberry, JC Bistro, the Ballroom, Center for the Arts, Harris Theater, and other large spaces and housing. Remember that different rooms may have a fee or cost associated with that that the organization will be responsible for. For example, Corner Pocket is $50 per hour before 6 p.m. and $65 after 6 p.m. The Side Pocket and Patio are only $30 daily. With these spaces, Tier 3 organizations have the ability to use the event services within that space that is sometimes provided free of charge. The information on what is within the spaces for use can be found on 25 Live or by emailing student centers at scenters at gmu.edu or calling 703-993-2921. Remember that it is very important to event services, policies, procedures, and guidelines before the semester begins. This is an important example of information that your organization will be held accountable for. An example would be the general guidelines for use where rules like no balloons permitted in the Johnson Center and scotch tape, duct tape, thumbtacks, or any other strong adhesive is not allowed on any surface in the facilities can be found. It is important for both the leaders and the members of the organizations to review these rules as everyone in the space is held to the same standard. The following options are always available to advertise your event or organization. Get Connected event, which you must always do. Kiosk and tables, Orca TV, flyers as provided by student center spaces and rules, table tents, chalking, easels, banners, Eventbrite, social media, the RSO listserv, cubes, and the George Mason statue. Creating a Get Connected event. Student organizations should always put any and all events on Get Connected. This is regardless of size or if it is for organization members only. This is a requirement for student organizations and can be started by going to getconnected.gdmu.edu. On the login page, sign in with your Mason Net ID and password. The same that you would for email or Patriot Web. 
Once you are signed in, you can click the top of the page, Organizations, or go to the search bar to search your organization. If you choose Organizations, you will see a search bar on the left-hand side that will allow you to search keywords to bring to your organization's name. Once you arrive at your organization page, you will see a variety of options. At the top, along the row of options, click on Events. You will see via the Events tab all of the past and future events for the organization. One reason to put your events on Get Connected is to help future leaders of your organization have good context for what your organization has done with date, time, and event details. This helps to create a historical archive for the events that your organization has accomplished. To create a new event to advertise, click on Create an Event. You will come to a page that you can enter in the event details. Once clicking on Create an Event, Click on Create an Event at the top, then Create an Event. You will add the event information such as the title, the date, the location, etc. on the form. So today we are going to create an event for Get Connected to Mason Fair during Welcome Week. Go ahead and type in the name of your event. Next, choose the app theme that is the most appropriate. Scroll down and provide a description that will encourage people to come to your event. It is important to provide as many details as possible so that people want to attend. Next detail date or dates of your event with the actual start time and the actual end time of your event. Be mindful of the AM and PM time choices. You can also add another date if your event goes longer than one day or if you have a repeat event. Then enter your location for the event. Please keep in mind that you must detail building and room number for the event. You can also add a helpful map. You can add this to help your participants find your location. You must click yes or no to the map option. Next, you need to decide the audience of your event. Anyone in the world is public. Keep in mind that if you make it only available to the Mason community, that your event will not be seen as someone is not logged into their account on Get Connected. Next, choose an event category that is most appropriate for your event. Then you choose who can RSVP to your event. If there are any perks to your event, please choose an option, otherwise you can leave it blank. Click Next to complete the information. Please remember, you must attach a visual image to your event. One of the most important changes to the interface of Get Connected is that the supported file types of the flyer. In order to help Get Connected be the most informed, it is best for any image that is uploaded to not have any text on it. If you do not want to upload an image, you can click Skip. Just keep in mind that your event will not be included on the main page of Get Connected or on University Life websites. After you have double-checked the details you have entered, you can click Next or Skipped. As an RSO, you will always choose the Registered Student Organization option. Then click Next. If you need to edit any information, you can do it on this page. As a best practice, you want to allow attendance at this event to be shown on the involvement record. And then don't forget to submit your event. If you do not include an image, the organization event will show up like this. This is where you can view RSVPs, other submissions, manage invitations, track attendance, and change any details. Requesting a kiosk or other student centers available advertising. To request kiosk, you will use the information via the student center's website at studentcenters.gmu.edu.
kiosk.edu. It is important to take note of where to book the kiosk because it will be transitioning to 25 Live. This means that only the president and treasurer will be able to book kiosks, similar to other spaces on campus. To request kiosks, you will use the information via the Student Center's website. As of right now, you can go to Advertising and click on Kiosks and Tables. To ensure that all organizations have a fair chance to use the kiosks, each organization is allotted 48 hours of reservation time that may be used during peak times, which is 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday, and 96 hours that may be used during off-peak times before 11 a.m. or after 4 p.m. or any time on Saturday and Sunday. Reservations are limited to a maximum of four hours per kiosk day. Multiple kiosks may be used at the same time, but the reservation time for each kiosk will be counted separately against the organization's semester allotment. Example, if a group reserves two kiosks from two to four, four hours of the group's peak time allotment will be used. If an organization cancels a reservation at least five business days in advance, all of the hours used for that reservation will be credited back to the organization's account. If you intend to collect money or donations during your kiosk reservation, you must say so in your request. See section on, re on reserving kiosks. Your request will not be confirmed with all required approval documentation. While waiting to receive your documentation, student centers will hold a space for your organization until five business days before your requested reservation. If we still do not have your documentation at this point, your reservation will be canceled. You are responsible for setting up the key correct kiosk on time. If you are more than 15 minutes late to your designated kiosk, you will be considered a no-show and your organization may lose future kiosking privileges. You must stand behind the kiosk and no music or amplified sound is permitted. If you wish to check on the number of reservation hours your organization has used, please contact student centers at 703-993-2921 or scenters at gmu.edu via email. Other options that are available under the advertising link at the top. These links are for banners, easels, table tents, leafleting procedures, Mason ads or Orca TV, and flyers that all can be found at this website. Please make sure you are paying careful attention to how to access all of these forms of advertising. When requesting a poll banner in the Johnson Center, each location has a specific name in 25 Live that corresponds to labels found on the polls. If there is a specific poll banner location you would like to request, select an available time for that location. For example, JC Banner A05W. The event name should be the name of your organization and put the number one in expected headcount on 25 Live. Student organizations are also able to reserve easel locations in the Johnson Center, the Hub and Sub One. This process is on 25 Live and is similar to that of a banner. Please refer to the Student Center's website for help. Student Centers provides whiteboard easels for these reservations, but if your organization has its own easel or other freestanding advertising you wish to display, such as pop -up, a pop-up banner, you are welcome to use those items instead as long as you notify Student Centers in advance. The following is an overview of the reservation process, process and some policy guidelines. For the complete list of terms and conditions, please visit studentcenters.gmu.edu backslash advertising backslash easels. This site also includes links to advertise via Fourth Estate or Parking Services. All of these services are available to your registered student organization on campus. Another way to advertise is via the RSO listserv. To put your event in the listserv, please email rso at gmu.edu with the event details and flyer to be included in the bi-weekly listserv newsletter that is sent out. 
RSOs can utilize the cube outside of Southside to advertise events, recruitment, and other opportunities available through your organization. You can sign up to paint a side at the Skyline front desk. Only events that have passed can be painted over. If you are advertising an event, you can paint the cube no more than two weeks before the date of your event. Student organizations are also eligible to reserve the George Mason statue on the South Plaza. This process to reserve the statue is different from reserving space around the statue. If you are interested in reserving the statue, please visit the University Life Suite in Sub 1, room 4211, during normal university business hours. You are highly encouraged to reserve the statue as early as you possibly can. Print Services is a wonderful way of getting flyers posted or banners printed. Located in the bottom floor of the Johnson Center, it is another internal way of using funding to meet your organization's needs. More options at their website can be found at printservices.gmu.edu. You will learn more about funding later in these training videos, but remember you must either have self-generated revenue or student funding board before you use your organization number to charge for print services. If not, you will ask to make a deposit to cover the bill. It is important to, to be aware of the policies associated with printing found at the website printservices.gmu.edu slash about slash policies. Get Connected, getconnected.gmu.edu is the online organization management tool at George Mason University. The platform can be used in a variety of ways and is constantly updated to help registered student organizations to manage, manage their organization profiles as well as the student's personal involvement. Among many things, Get Connected can help your organization do the following. Organization profile management, photo management, event management, news and blogs, roster management, messaging, personal profile or involvement record, document management, forms, and social media integration. We will show you how to do all of these wonderful things on Get Connected. You must go to getconnected.gmu.edu. You must log in with your Mason Net ID and password. The first item we will show you is organization profile management. This is where you can upload your profile picture, update the organization cover photo, and many other items. To update your organization profile picture and cover photo, please find organizations at the top navigation tool, type in the name of your organization, click on your organization, Go to About, and you will see your About information, and you click Edit. Here is where you can edit the description, the summary, your profile picture, your street address, which can include the mail stop number for student involvement, phone number, fax number, email, any external website links, which can include a Google Calendar, and any social media. This can also include any organizational information if you need to edit this, what month you will hold your elections, the anticipated amount of organization dues, and any special requirements for your membership. Another way to keep your organization profile up to date is to add photos of years past. This will help you to have a great archive to pull from when you update your cover photos. This also helps to create an incredible archive for future members. To upload photos, fall, click on Gallery on the top navigation bar. Once you click on Gallery, there should be an option available to create a new album. From here, you will give the album a name. A description. And who is able to see these photos? And then click Create Album. From here, you can add photos by dragging or clicking on these photos. And you can click 
update all. It will show if the photo is uploaded successfully. You can click go back to album and then you can edit the album from here. You can also edit each individual photo and this is where you can set the album cover. In the training we showed you how to put an event on Get Connected as a part of the resources available to you. Student organizations should always put all events on Get Connected regardless of the size or whether it is for organizations only. This is available via the events tab. Along with events, news or blog posts can be published on the site to help explain more about an event. Advertise elections or create a space where updated organization news is kept. This helps to create an archive for both current and future members of the organization. This can help to create buy-in for members if they are looking for a way to really contribute by describing why they are part of the organization and help advertise for new members. Roster management is one of the most important tools on Get Connected. Remember that twice every academic year student involvement requires all organization rosters to be updated. These deadlines are September 1st and February 1st. In order to have an up-to-date roster, the following items must be met. At least eight members listed on the roster. Executive board members are up-to-date and in compliance with student involvement. The number of executive board members are in compliance with your tier. And there are new members listed as of the semester it is being checked. All members that are over four years old must be removed manually. It is important to keep an up-to-date roster for both student involvement as well as for your organization. Another feature that is available on Get Connected is the ability to manage your roster, and this helps to provide an important list or feature that will replace any other list and help to keep both your general membership and eboards up to date on everything. To manage your roster, please click on Manage Roster at the top of the roster page. You can click all, End All Memberships if you would like to start from new or if you feel as though your roster is not up to date. You can see the current positions. You can edit positions by clicking here and unclicking or clicking where, they would, where you would like them to be edited. You can click here and then click End Membership for individual memberships ended. You can also click here to change the primary contact of the organization. The person must already be a member in order for the contact to be listed as the primary contact. You can invite people to the organization by clicking here and typing in their GMU addresses. Remember that it must be at gmu.edu as Mason Live is not accepted and click add email addresses. Someone can come to the page to also request membership. Another way is to manage positions. You can create new positions here or click on these to then edit the access. For current members, if the roster is up to, to date, you can message your organization by completing the following steps. First, click on Roster. Then you will click the messaging option located below Invite People. Here is where you can create the relay or use texts if that's an option for your organization. To create a relay, click Create Relay and then select the position. Click on Edit and collect who select who you would like to receive the message. You can also be specific with specific people and sending them a message through the system. We have a total of nine recipients and then we want to send a message. Then click Generate. From here, you will be given a URL to send the message that will appear in the gray box to the right on, on the right side of the screen. 
click on the URL to copy or paste it and paste it into your email and this will be sent to whomever you have indicated, helping to create an email trail of what has been sent. You will then enter the body of the email into the specific email. It is important to encourage your members to go onto their Get Connected profiles to fill out their information, add a profile photo, and turn their notifications on. This will also ensure that messages are received from you and other administrators. By doing this, you click on your name at the top and go to Settings, and this is where you can edit your profile information and add a profile photo, contact information, privacy settings, and notifications. In notifications, you want all of these to be blue in order to receive the messages from the system. Putting a profile photo, you will allow for your organization to have visual representation to ensure that other members are interacting more with the site. You can even fill in your demographics below, as well as your social media profile links. In addition to keeping events, the roster, and photos up to date, you can also archive all of the organization's documents by going to Organizations, back to your organization, click, and finding documents on the top navigation bar. Through re-registration, the constitution and or copy of the current bylaws are already up to date on the website. You can adjust the names of the documents to help be more clear with the most up-to-date version. You can also add and remove other documents or, or put them into folders. This is similar to Google Docs where all of your important documents can be stored without fear of losing them or misplacing them. Another useful feature on Get Connected is the ability to build forms to solicit information. You will find this on Forms at the top of the navigation bar. Student Involvement uses these same forms for student funding board applications, bench painting applications, re-registration forms, and the Distinguished Quill Awards applications to name a few. These are incredibly helpful to keep all of the information in the same place. To create a form, you can do the following. First, click on Forms in the top navigation bar. Click on Manage Forms, located on the left side of the screen. And from here, you can either edit previous forms or create another form. When you create a form, you will need to determine a name. And click Active if you are ready for the organization to go live and then decide who you would like to have access to the form. You can also allow multiple submissions if you would like to allow people several opportunities to, to use the form. Click Save and Add Questions. And then you have several different options for questions. Instructions. Checkboxes, radio button list, single checkbox, ranking, file upload, or drop down list. Form properties takes you back to the original information to allow you to edit this. And then page properties allows you to name the page and press OK. Once you go to page list, you can then add pages from there, choosing the same options. Once you have more than two pages, you can create conditions based on the questions that you have insert into the pages. You will select a group or add a condition based on either yes, it is selected or is not selected. There are several uses for the form, including surveys for members, a different way to operate elections, solicit opinions, or have members sign up for opportunities such as organization fairs, staffing, etc. One of the best ways to help connect all of your social media platforms and get connected is, again, the social media integration part of the website. Again, you go back to About, Edit, and you scroll down to 
see all of your social media that is available on your on your organization page. Through this, you want to make sure that you're clicking show Facebook page on organization profile as well as show most recent public tweets. By doing this, this will help this appear on the home page of your organization page. It will appear here above the discussion. To connect your social media platforms, this is, can also always be done during the re-registration process. There are so many features on Get Connected that may benefit your organization. This includes conducting elections, storing documents, and event tracking service hours for your organization. Get Connected is a great platform to really document what your organization has done throughout the year, keep track of members, documents, photos, events, and really help to build an archive for your future members. Student involvement and orientation does a tremendous job of promoting the platform as a place to go to find student organizations. It is up to you as the leader of an organization to ensure that the information is inviting, up to date, and welcoming to new students. The best resource available to student organizations is student involvement. In student involvement, you can find the following resources. Student involvement is in the Hub Suite 2300, and it is a place to have small meetings, mailbox access, imagination station, and lockers. Collaboration opportunities include fraternity and sorority life, student government, well-being team, Patriot Activities Council with off-campus programming, TEDx George Mason U, as well as student involvement films. All of these areas within the office offer great opportunities for RSOs to collaborate. Student involvement is also a great resource. RSO lead team for support and student involvement staff support as event planners, listserv information, social media, and the RSO lead team liaison assigned to your category of organization. The student involvement website includes fiscal management information, student funding board, the RSO handbook, and event planning training as a part of the online trainings. And student involvement also offers the ability to participate in staff organized fair, fairs like the Get Connected Fair, Yard Fest, and the Winter Fair. There are leadership development opportunities, the Distinguished Quill Award Ceremony, and the opportunity to paint a bench and gain publicity all year. There is also the most important on-campus account to manage your organization funds. Student involvement, there is the ability to utilize the open space to have both small meetings with your executive boards or with individual members. This space offers both tables and some cubicles for personal work as well as chairs that can be used to convene comfortably. Additionally, student involvement offers the imagination station where you can create posters, banners, trifolds, or use the helium tank for balloons and much more. To use the imagination station, please visit the front desk to let them know you will be using the space. Please be mindful that this is a space for everyone and it is important to clean up, your, up after yourself and your members. Every organization has access to a mailbox in this space as well. Located in the front of student involvement, there are often flyers and other promotional items as well as any mail for your organization. To mail something to your mailbox, please use the following address. Your student organization name, 4400 University Drive, MSN 2D6, Fairfax, Virginia, 22030. If a larger package is received, you will be mailed by student involvement to come pick up your package immediately. Lockers are also available for student organization use. During re-registration, the opportunity to obtain a locker and sign a locker agreement was within the application. Remember that these must be cleaned out every year so they may be allocated to other organizations if you do not request the use of one for the next academic year. In student involvement, there are lots of collaboration opportunities, including all of the ones that are listed here for Trans Sorority Life, Student Government, Wellbeing, Patriot Activities Council, TEDx George Mason U, and Student Involvement Films. The student involvement offers a lot of support for your organizations. This includes full-time staff members that can provide insight, information, or guidance for your event or organization. The support also includes the RSO Lead Team and Student Funding Board. The RSLE team will have a liaison for each category of registered student organizations. 
Typically, this means that a member is assigned to special interest, science and technology, volunteer and service, academic, international multicultural, and a religious organization category. This is self-selected during the re-registration process by organizations. These RSLUT members will reach out once a semester to schedule a meeting to get to know you and your organization, understand how to best to support you, and share pertinent information and opportunities with you. The RSLUT team has also at least one student funding board member, the social media liaison, and at least two event planners on the team. These members are specialized in these skills to meet with you to answer questions on how best to utilize the resources on campus. The social media liaison can help to advertise your event on the RSLD team social media and RSO listserv. The student funding board also completes their office hours in the RSLD team space and student involvement. The student funding board, while structurally a part of student government, helps to close any gaps between student government and registered student organizations. Coming into the RSLD team space during office hours will help get any of your questions answered and meet some of your fellow student leaders. The student involvement website, available at si.gmu.edu, can also help to answer any questions that you have. By navigating the site, you can hover over student organizations. By doing this, you will have access to the fiscal management portion of the website, as well as the student funding board. By clicking on student organizations, you will, be, you will come to the home page that has the link for the RSO handbook by clicking on RSO handbook. The handbook is a searchable document that is constantly updated to include event planning information, student involvement staff information, and all of the information including in the trainings for re-registration. This handbook can help to find answers to many of the questions that you have as a student leader. Available on the left-hand navigation bar, you will find more information on the RSO leadership team, the annual RSO summit, the three-tiered model, RSO re-registration information and timelines, how to start a new organization, training information, another fiscal management link, awards and recognition fairs, which include bench painting, distinguished quill awards, and yard fest information, as well as other resources that you can click on. Lockers, policies and guidelines, newsletters, advisor resources. Inside each of these links, you will find great information for your organization. Another really important part of the website, available both on, the, on this left side, as mentioned previously, the fiscal management portion. This is where you can find all forms as well as signups for fiscal 1.5 training, which usually are available here at the top of the page. Much like the RSO handbook, the fiscal handbook is available on this page as well. If you scroll down, you will see RSO fiscal handbook and you can click on this link. Similar to the RSO handbook, this document is also search searchable and helps to answer financial questions like what is a purchase order? How do I make a deposit into my on-campus account? How do I write a letter to accept donations for my organization? There are many other questions that can be answered by the Fiscal Handbook as well. Also available on the website is information about the Student Funding Board. Please scroll to the top, hover over Student Organizations, and click on Student Funding Board. On the Student Funding Board portion of the website, you will find information regarding Student Funding Board members and the office hours that they are available, materials and forms, including the Student Funding Board application located at the top of the page. This is also where you can find the Faculty SFB Advisor Approval Form, as well as the Event Evaluation Form that must be turned in for your event after your event is completed. The deadline portion of this website is one of the most important portions of the Student Funding Board website. Here you will see the deadlines available for the entire academic year for the event dates for which that deadline is eligible for, when the SFB will review, and when allocations are sent out. It is extremely important for your organization to take careful note of all of these columns. Other opportunities for student organizations, such as award ceremonies, bench painting, and training, are all great resources for student organizations to help create a presence on campus. 
This again can be found at student organizations and go back to awards and recognition and organization fairs. To participate in organization fairs like the Get Connected Fair, Patriot Premier, Yard Fest, which is in both the fall and the spring, the RSO Winter Fair, an organization needs to maintain good standing with student involvement. These are great opportunities to be out in the open and really recruit new members. It is always good to have one or two members with you at tables to help say hello to potential new members and invite them in for a great conversation. Distinguished Quill Awards and Bench Painting are other great staff organized opportunities for registered student organizations, which are both available in the late spring. These events are designed to recognize student organizations' presence and accomplishments. Distinguished Quill Awards is a long-standing award ceremony where an organization and leader can win recognition for all the fabulous and hard work from the academic year. Benches on Sub 1 Quad are available at the end of each academic year seen during orientation and a prime stopping point for admissions tours. These benches are an incredible way for an organization to advertise their presence all year long. Other training opportunities are also available from student involvement. In addition to these resources and event planning trainings, which are available to view all year long, student involvement provides the annual RSO Summit, which requires attendance from every organization. This is set up in a conference style to give organization leaders the opportunity to network with one another and meet the RSLD team and all other professionals over, all over George Mason's campus. A new opportunity for training is the Elevate series. A new opportunity for training is the Elevate series, which offer topics such as time management to any student leader on campus. This is in addition to the resources offered across campus. Student involvement hopes to help you develop as a well-rounded student leader. Outside of student involvement, but one of the best resources offered is your on-campus account. This account helps you to charge on-campus goods and services similar to a debit card. This includes Sodexo catering, event services, print services, parking, and much more. You can ask the business manager in student involvement at sibudget at gmu.edu to give you an update on your account to verify your own records. Your organization number will start with a 610 and then have three numbers to designate your organization in a 610 number 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 format. This information is shared with your president and treasurer at the end of re-registration via an email and can be in, obtained in person at the student involvement front desk or via email by emailing rso at gmu.edu at any time. This information can only be obtained by your president or your treasurer. As a registered student organization on campus, you have access to many resources and avenues of support. Do not be afraid to utilize them. Also know that if you have experience or feel that an event or situation that has happened in which bias has played a role, the university is here to support you. Please make sure that you and your members are aware that the bias incident form can be found at biasincident.gmu.edu. Thank you so much for watching the tier resources video. And as always, please let the RSO lead team know if you have any questions at rso at gmu.edu or stop in to see us at the Hub Suite 2300.